when Purina developed better fish foods and people could grow two pound bluegills, that's when the, when the face of bluegill began to change to become more of a game fish. Hey, Mr. Pond Boss, tell me what to do to make all my Lunker Lake dreams come true. Hello, everybody. Bob Lust, the Pond Boss. Let's talk about bluegills. Up until probably around 2005, bluegill were considered only the backbone of the food chain for largemouth bass. You know, because the bluegill reproduces prolifically, of course, in different parts of the nation, different latitudes, they, may not, they won't spawn as much in Iowa as they do in South Texas, for example. South Texas, you know, there's 330 perfect bluegill growing days where they can reproduce five, six times. Where in Iowa, if you get three spawns, you've had a great year for bluegill. So bluegill have always been considered the backbone of the food chain. They weren't really considered a, a game fish in pond management. They're a sport fish in other, in other arenas, but what happened was when Purina developed better fish foods and people could grow two pound bluegills, that's when the, when the face of bluegill began to change to become more of a game fish. Now there's different strains of bluegill scattered out around the nation. You know, copper nose bluegill in the southeastern part of the nation, they've been stocked all over the south, uh, Arkansas, parts of Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, and they thrive. Copper nose bluegill, people love them because they're colorful and they seem to get a little bit bigger than some of our native strains. But a copper nose bluegill is not gonna thrive in Virgil Myers Pond in Iowa. It just isn't. They don't like cold. They're resistant to that. Matter of fact, they're not just resistant, they'll die. I've watched them. I've watched them fall to the bottom, lay on their sides, stop breathing, and just die in cold water. So when I talk to people about bluegills, one of the things I tell folks is, if you'll feed them well, they train to fish food really easily, and the better health they have, the better nutrition they have, the more they can reproduce, and the bigger they're gonna grow. Another fun thing about bluegill is once they mature sexually, their growth rate slows way, way, way down. So in bluegill management, one thing we're trying to do is preserve the best of the best. Don't eat the biggest bluegill in your pond. Let them keep growing, and force the fish smarter than they are to outgrow them to compete for nest space. And when that happens, then you'll, then you'll be able to have some perpetually big bluegills. Another thing I've learned is if you've got a small hatchery pond and you can grow some bluegills, stocking them into an existing bass bluegill lake is effective from two standpoints. One, you can enhance the food chain, but even more importantly, you're adding some fish that might otherwise have gotten eaten at a smaller size and you're increasing your odds of growing more big bluegills if that's one of the missions. So there's a little bitty tidbit about bluegill, Palm Boss Magazine. Now this is what fuels the economy so I can do stuff like this. 35 bucks a year, cheaper than a Friday night date, and it lasts a year. Adios for now. Hey Mr. Palm Boss, tell me what to do to make all my Lunker Lake dreams come true.